Let's invite the Lord in this place. Holy Father, I thank you that you are in us and for us and not against us. Lord, as we gather together as believers in you, Lord, may you hear the cries of our hearts. May you answer the needs of your people. May we humble ourselves before you and see your miraculous ways are for us. Lord, may we understand your word and may we operate in the wisdom of it, Lord God. Lord, may we know that it is alive and active for us today. Lord, I pray over every person here that their mind be open to you and all that you have for them. And Lord, I pray that you ignite our spirits, bring the passion back of our first love, Lord God. Lord, that we would be that church upon a hill, Lord God, that would offer your holy ways, that would bring righteousness back to the land, that would bring breakthrough, Lord God, back into the schools and to the workplaces, Lord God, that would, our light would show forth, that would ultimately move in power, Lord God. Lord, that we would not be an empty, dead vessel, but that we would be overflowing, that the oil of heaven that is for us, Lord, pour into this place through us. Lord, everything that has come against us, we plead the blood of Jesus and put it under our feet now. Lord, we recognize that your kingdom ways are for us. So, Lord, we acknowledge that in this place. We honor you. We give you the glory that nothing can be done without you or aside from you. In the name of Jesus, every bit of counsel of the word go forth today. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Lifting me up from the ground. 
opener, we're going to get into some worship now. And uh, um, man, I just, uh, I woke up this morning, I was not feeling awesome. <laughs> I, I don't, it's just one of those things that happens. I'm not going to try to split hairs about whether or not it's Satan. I'm just going to let you know that, man, sometimes stuff gets in the way. <laughs> and it's so easy to let that distraction separate you from the goodness of God. Because we get so focused on whether it's something we did wrong, whether it was Satan, whether God's allowing us to go through something difficult. But man, God has been faithful our whole lives. He really has. He was faithful before we were even created. He is so faithful. And so as we just come into this song, I just want you to think of the goodness of God and how he's been working in your life. Because he is so good and he is so faithful all the time. And we can push aside the other stuff and just focus on what a good God he is.
presence is in this place right now. There's no amount of darkness that's over you right now that can overcome the goodness of God. Just leave the lights down for just a moment because I'm telling you, there's a breakthrough happening right now. You are entering a shift in your life, but you got to step out and take it. You got to make the move because Jesus says, come, 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 and I will heal you. Come, 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 and I will deliver you. Come, 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 I will set you free of the bondage and the depression that has been on you. But you have to walk out. You got to take a step because he will not do it for you. He will require something of you, and that's surrender. You have to submit. And if you've been walking in rebellion here in this place this morning against the almighty God, this is your moment to release it. It's so easy. There's no power in hell that can hold you down from his love. There's no depths too high or depths too low, there's no, and nothing too high that can keep you from his love. His goodness abounds and is for you. Those things that have been coming against you that have caused you to struggle in your faith, he's about to tear that down and build your faith here this morning. Those things that have caused you to, to doubt whether God is real or whether he's for you. You might even think he's against you at some times. But I'm telling you that he is here in this place right now. His love is abounding. His love is good. For he is a good, 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 good father. And you ought to praise him in this house this morning. You ought to give him some glory this morning. Because he's such a good God that he went to the cross. He took your sins. He took your sorrows. He took your depression. And can I tell you, he took your own oppression. You do not have to suffer with sickness. You do not have to suffer with mental issues. You do not have to suffer with wavering, doubt, fear. It must leave at the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he is in this house right now. And your deliverance is here right now. Your healing is here right now. But you got to receive it in this place this morning. You got to walk out on faith and just believe. You got to stand and just believe. You got to say, the Lord, you're my God but it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you the way you thought. It's going to cost you your depression. See, some people don't want to give up their illness. They don't want to give up their sickness because they like to feel sorry for themselves. In fact, they like others to feel sorry for them. Maybe it's a power play or a pity play, but I'm telling you the truth that you deep down inside, you know that it's not for you. It's not right. It's not good. It's not healthy. And it's not the way of the Lord. But his presence is so thick in this place right now. There's nothing I can do for you. 
But the Holy Spirit's here and he will. That's what he does. Because he loves you so much. His love abounds. His love abounds. His love abounds. Let's just worship him just a moment. Just tell him how good he is. Tell him how good he is. I'm telling you, there's a breakthrough in the atmosphere right now. Your life is about to change. But you got to step out and call on his name. You got to call on his name because he's your strong tower. He's your refuge. He's about to put your feet back on solid rock again and take you out of that miry clay. That quicksand that's been pulling you down ever so much lower. He's about to set you on a firm foundation, but you got to make that foundation on Jesus Christ. You got to drop self because you can't do it. You're not strong enough. You're not smart enough. You're not good looking enough. You're not able to do it. Only Jesus Christ is the strong foundation. And then upon that foundation, he'll build his church. He'll build you on that foundation. So Lord God, today in this place, Lord, we just surrender ourselves to you. Holy Spirit, whatever you want to do today, we want to be sensitive to your voice, your presence. I thank you for the angels that are whizzing and whirling around us right now. I thank you, Lord God, that there's there's anointings being poured out on the people. There's joy. There's joy once again in the house of the Lord. Lord, in your name, Jesus, we break off these depressing things, these thoughts, these oppressing things that are pushing down the people and causing them to achieve the greatness that they were called for. In this place this morning, Holy Spirit, we say come do surgery on our hearts. Cut away the hardness, the bitterness, and the pain. And replace it with love, joy, and peace. He's doing the work right now. We're not going to rush this. This is a holy moment. He's doing a work right now. Just give him your pain. Give it to him. He'll throw it away and replace it with joy, with health, with goodness. Because he's a good God. He doesn't give any bad gifts. He's unable to. He can't do it. He's a good father. He only gives good gifts. Only the devil gives you the bad gifts. If you're in pain today, it's not from the father. If you need a healing today, that is from the Father. Because <laughs> Jesus paid the price 2,000 years ago. Who here needs, a, needs healing in their body? Just come on up here. We're going to pray for you right now. You know what? There's no schedule of service. Nothing is more important than you right now. Come on, there's more. Come on, don't be shy. Don't be bashful. This, God's going to do this this morning. You got to surrender it to him. Just line up across the front. You need a touch in your body. Don't be ashamed. Don't be, don't be embarrassed. This is a holy moment. This is a holy convocation. Things don't happen by accident. You weren't here by chance. God doesn't set an order of service and then just change his mind about things. I thank you for my brother. And Lord God, I thank you that right now healing is being released in his body. Not just in his physical, but in his emotional. That right now the pain is being taken away. The emotional trauma, the damage. Lord God, the insecurities, the hurts. Lord God, we just put them under the blood of Jesus right now. We just demand and decree restoration, oh God, over his mind and his heart. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let there be an infilling of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let there be just an overwhelming peace come over him, Lord God. Because he's surrounded render to you and you are in control. We bless our brother in this place this morning. We thank you for a touch in him, Lord God. We praise you and give you all the glory. You just got to start saying thank you, Cody. You just tell him thank you. Lord, for Lacey, Lord God, she gave it all today. Lord, the anointing came through. Lord God, her body's not doing well, but we decree right now well.
soundness, wholeness, healing in the name of Jesus. Come on, you guys got to just pray with me here. It's not just me here. It's all of us together because we're a body, we're a family, and these are our people. So, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you're flooding through her, that you're flowing through her, and that, Lord God, that there's a release of anointing, a wave of anointing that she's not yet known, that, Lord God, she's going to walk deeper, deeper, deeper in the name of Jesus. And that, Lord God, these things the devil tries to put against her of insecurities, and she's not good enough, and she is not going to be good enough. Lord, we break that right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we break the curse off the household in the name of Jesus. Lord, we break everything off, even generational, in the name of Jesus. That, Lord God, that nothing can come against her mind because she has the mind of Christ. And that, Lord God, her body's coming into alignment with the mind and the spirit. And, Lord God, she's going to be a weapon of warfare. She's going to be mighty, oh God, for tearing down strongholds through worship in the name of Jesus. And, Lord God, we give you the glory this morning for what you're doing, for what you're doing, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. For believe, Lord God. Lord, we just pray for faith right now over her. That, Lord, that she would submit today. She would surrender today to your word. Believe, do you do that today? Do you give your life to Jesus today? You, okay, then, then, then you are a child of God. Amen? So that he will do it. So he'll do it for anybody. It's called grace. And so you're worthy, right? Okay, so hallelujah, Jesus. We just thank you for a believer right now. And I thank you, Lord God, that you're just instilling her the faith to move mountains. Oh, Lord God, the things that have been oppressing her and depressing her, we're breaking off in the name of Jesus. Lord, every unclean spirit. Lord God, everything not of you. We break it off right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit because he's holy, 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 holy. And Lord God, that she's about to see the Lord. For without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So Lord God, God, right now, I thank you for the holiness coming upon her that'll burn her eyes, oh God. She won't even be able to see out of them like usual, Lord. It's going to change her vision. It's going to change her thinking. In fact, it's going to change her job description in the name of Jesus. Lord, we decree goodness upon her, and we speak it over her. Lord, those years the locusts have taken from her, those years those demons have snatched from her, we demand it back in the name of Jesus. And she's a child of the Most High God, and Lord God, we break off every lie every deceptive thought that's come into her. And Lord God, we just release her now by the renewing of her mind. Freedom, freedom, freedom in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, may she be able to walk holy. May she be able to think holy. May she be able to be run and not be weary in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, for my brother Caden. Lord God, this morning we just decree, Lord God, a mighty move in his life. Lord, he's going around looking to and fro. Lord, what do you have for me? What do you want me to do? What where do I go from here? But Lord God, open the doors this morning. Lord, let there be opportunity knocking. Lord, let it be from heaven above because you direct his paths and his footsteps. And Lord, his wrist, oh God. His wrist is giving him problems. So right now we just decree a final healing once and for all. That Lord God, that these bones that keep coming apart, these tendons that keep stretching, Lord, this pain that keeps coming back, we bind it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we release, we release, we release you, Holy Spirit, into his life. That Lord, his eyes will see clearly the plans that you have laid out for him. They are plans to build up and not tear down. They are plans to restore, oh God. And they're plans to use him mightily in these last days. Lord, may he be a blessing to his parents, O oh Lord. And Lord, may there be peace in the household in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For my brother Russell, Lord, Lord, he's a mighty warrior. Lord, he is a Gideon about to tear down the sheriff poles. Lord, he's a strong tower in you. He's got good roots that are deeply firm, firmly, deeply rooted in you. And Lord, I thank you that you're going to use him mightily. I thank you, Lord God, that you're increasing the anointing. I thank you, Lord, that you are building him up. That, Lord God, he says, what am I doing? I'm doing this and I'm doing that, but I don't see a ministry happening even though I'm called. But, Lord God, you've got it just around the corner. Lord, you're about to release him into an outpouring, into an awakening, Lord, that the world has never seen. Lord, he will see it with his own eyes, oh God. He will be a part of it, oh Lord, and many will come to Christ through him. Lord, I thank you for this body 
Right now, we demand and decree a perfect healing, Lord. Lord, right now, everything the devil's come, try to bring against him at work. We just bind it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just release the sound mind. I thank you for his testimony because it's turning many to you. Lord, they see him and say, why are you so different? Why are you so special? He goes, tell me, let me tell you about Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for the, for the Elijah spirit that's in him of fire, oh God. Now we release the fire here in this place. We release it in this place that he may go forth and do mighty miracles, oh God, that when he lays hands on the sick, they will recover. Lord, when he prays for the dead, they will raise back to life again. Lord, when he prays for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they will be filled in the name of Jesus. So Lord God, right now, we break off the doubts, oh God. We break out the, the Lord, the small mindedness that says, I'm nobody. Lord God, I thank you for his humble spirit, but Lord, it's time to rise up, mighty man of God. It's time to rise up, giant. It's time to take your stand, and it's time to cut down some share of poles in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for my sister, and Lord, I thank you that right now, you are making all things come together for good. Lord God, what used to be hard will be easy. Lord God, what has given her a hard time will be gone in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that over their property, we decree goodness. We decree the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, that you would, you would, Lord God, sanctify the land and that, Lord, it would produce good things for them, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for their marriage, Lord, that you're building it up, that you're strengthening the love for our spouses, oh God. And I thank you, Lord, as their family comes into town, that, Lord, it'll be good, not bad. <laughs> it'll be a good thing, Lord. And, Lord, we just thank you for an abundance to flow into their bosom. I thank you for them, and we bless them. And right now, for her body, we just decree strength in the name of Jesus. Lord God, no longer will she feel like she needs to pep up because she's so pepped up, she's getting annoying. Lord God, she's running circles around other people. She's got energy, and energy abundant, Lord God. Lord, she's even just kind of annoying her husband with all the energy she has, chatting his ear off. We thank you, Lord, that you're building her up and that you're bringing her into the land of promise in the name of Jesus. Lord, hallelujah for the miracles today. Come on, give the Lord some praise this morning. He's doing some work today. Hallelujah, he's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Somebody just, let's just keep praising him for just a minute. Lord, you're so good in this place this morning. You're so good in this place, oh God. Lord, we just want more. We're not satisfied with the way things have been, Lord. Lord, we're willing to walk into it, Lord God. We're willing to walk through it, Lord God. Just, just guide us and lead us, Jesus. Lord, you are a strong tower. We run into you and we are saved. Nothing can come against us. Change our minds in the place today. Let there be a renewal and a restoration over the mind. And Lord, I thank you that you're making all things new. You said, behold, I'm making all things new. Those things that were will not be the way things are. You're so good, Lord. You're so good, Lord. I thank you that you're bringing around restoration. I thank you that you haven't forgotten anyone. That every person is so important in this place. You're so good, Father. Hallelujah. Ooh, God's good. <laughs> Man, I don't know where we're going, but we're going forward. <laughs> Uh, you can be seated if you can. If not, don't worry about it. <sighs> Anointing is heavy in this place, and it should be. Because we pray for the presence. And only the presence can change a life. I can't talk you into it. I can encourage you. But only the presence of God and you can make a difference. So I encourage you today to receive the word and walk in the authority he gave you to trample on snakes and scorpions to drink deadly poison and not be hurt to cleanse the leper to raise the dead that is what you've been called to do and today you're being renewed in all of this your faith is being restored so I prayed yesterday and I said Lord I said I don't have a message. I need a message. I need a message. I need a message. I need a message. And uh, yeah, I do that, Nathan. <laughs> Nathan thinks it just comes to me. It's like, I got to work for it, man. It comes to him. 
<laughs> but uh, he said, Colossians 3, 13. I didn't, know, I didn't know what that was. I said, yeah, I don't think Nathan knows. He knows where I'm going. Nathan, come on. Prophetic spirit going on over there. <laughs> so, uh, so 313, I said, okay. So this is a word for somebody here today, maybe everybody. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start at verse 12. I'm going to back it up and read uh, 3, 12 to 15, and then we'll just pray to let God's word flow. So since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, listen, he chose you people. He chose you. If you're here today, you were chosen by God. I'm not saying if you're not here, you weren't chosen. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, you were chosen because this is a word for you. Amen? God's not limited by space and time or the internet. You don't have to be here to receive revelation. <laughs> but he said he chose you to be the holy people he loves. You must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Verse 13 I'm going to park here. I'm going to come back to this. Make allowance for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. That's a word here. That's a word this morning. Verse 14. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And verse 15. Let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the word this morning. We know it does not return void. We thank you for the power and authority backed by the word of God that goes forth right now to change lives. Lord, we uh, just prick every heart and mind right now with the word. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that, that Lord, nothing can stop it. We take captive every thought, every imagination, everything that uh, exalts itself above you and against you, and we put it under our feet right now. We put it under your blood, Jesus. And Lord God, we just take captive our minds right now to receive the word of the Lord. Let it change our lives. And Lord, may we be empowered and built up in faith and love and hope. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. All right. Well, it's exciting. Cool. Glad you guys are here today. Uh, if it's your first time here, hallelujah, man. You're, you're part of us. <laughs> We're all family here, so that's good. And, uh, and anyway, so we try to treat people with love, amen? Try to treat people with respect, amen? And so most offenses are misunderstandings. Have you noticed that? An offense is really just a misunderstanding. And what happens is we take that misunderstanding and we turn it and use it as a defense against that person. And then what happens is we never deal with the actual situation. So the situation just exacerbates. It just grows and just gets worse and worse. In fact, today, offense is the number one tool of the enemy. Numero uno. In church today, churches are splitting left and right because of offense. I don't like you. You don't like me. I don't like this. I don't like that. Offense is huge today. It's a huge tool. And the bad news is it's because the people of God don't forgive. They don't, they don't practice the word. If you're a child of God, then you have to follow what Jesus said about offense and forgiveness. Amen? No one likes to hear that, but here's the definition of offense. If you want to put that on the screen there. Definition of offense is a breach of law or rule. It's an illegal act like you committed a traffic offense. Or number two, annoyance or resentment. Now, how many of you get annoyed and resentful about somebody sometimes? Come on. Be, be honest. Three of us. Oh, you guys, you guys. Man, if I, had, if I had a dollar for every person that annoyed me. Thank you. They're coming up now. <laughs> They're starting to think about it going, yeah, I got some people that annoy me for sure. Uh, annoyance or resentment brought about by a perceived insult. I want to talk about perception or disregard for oneself or one's standards or principles. So perception is an interesting word. I'll give you a definition. I do that because uh, I want you to see what it actually says in the dictionary. I could tell you, but it's better when you see it. Perception, perception definition is a way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something, a mental impression. And perception uses your senses to come up with a mental picture of what you're dealing with. Uses the, how many of you like seeing someone give you a glare? You're like, I don't like that person. They're glaring at me. And it turns out they weren't glaring. They were looking at something behind you. But, but what it does, your senses interpret, perceive your realm around you and cause it to go into your mind and build a mental image of what you're perceiving. Does that make sense? 
There's a lot there. What you hear, somebody says something, maybe their tone is a little different. You know, you can say things in different tones, and all of a sudden you're like, I take offense at that, the way it was said. And you build a men mental picture of what's happening in your mind there. The problem with that is the demonic realm always causes your perception to be skewered because the things coming in often get twisted. They often get averted. They often get skewered, and it was never meant to. And then you get that little, that little outside influence that goes, look what they said about you. They're all talking about you. They can't stand you. They don't like you anymore. And do you know what I'm talking about? Amen? So it's a perceived reality in your own mind. So the problem is your own mind. Now, sometimes it's real and it's genuine. And then you just, not, we'll get to that point. Right now I'm just talking about the perception of offense. Um, an attack, a definition of, a, this is kind of interesting. Did you know that offense and offense, sounds the same. Are the, they sound the same, right? Offense, like offense, defense, offense, offense. Spelled the same, sound the same. But when you think of offense, it's almost like an attack. So the action of attacking someone or something, and the defense is the action of defending from or resisting attack. So, so we see offense creates defense, and the defense shuts the people down. Amen? Okay. So here, here's something that just came to me this morning. And uh, do you have that on the, the next one on there? Oh, wow, fancy. This is what happens when I, the difference between her doing it and me doing it. It's like, woo. If you are a habitual offender, you have not the love of the Father. Now, just leave that up there for a second. If you're constantly offending people, then you're not loving. You have the love of the Father is not in you because that's your fruit. If people are constantly offended when they're around you, then you have not the love of the Father. Next one. If you are being habitually offended, you have not the forgiveness of Jesus. Ooh, go ahead and write that down. That's good stuff. That's a good nugget. So this is how you can tell where you're at. If you're always going around being offended, then you don't have any forgiveness of Jesus in you. Because if you can't forgive, he can't forgive you. It's about to get real here in just a moment. Let's go to Ephesians Four, two to three, and it says, always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults. Now, isn't that interesting that what we read above in Colossians, it says, make an allowance for each other's faults. Now, it's both written by Paul, so I mean, it kind of makes sense. But he emphasized, make allowance for one's faults. So how many people in here have faults? Right? What happens if I only look at your faults? What happens if I just look at the worst in you what happens when I do that? Then all I'm doing is creating an offense because I'm going to always be critical of the worst in you. Amen? And so, so, but because of your love, because your love, in verse three, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Now I'm going to start to bring this real. It's going to be nice and short today, which is fine because I really want to, I really feel like just God's presence here. I really want to get back into worship again because that was awesome. But I got to get through this. And, and for most of us, we don't have an offense issue, but it's going to be an issue because it's an arrow. It's a tactic. It's a, it's a, it's a strategy from the demonic realm to destroy churches. So it's better to be prepared than go in and start, you know, trying to play catch up in this. So Mark 11, 22 to 25, I'm going to read verse 25 first. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Let me just say that again. First forgive anyone. Your prayers are worthless without forgiveness. Oh, I'm going to get, this is going to get deep here in a little bit. You're going to be like, whoa, whoa. Because if you don't see fruit in your life, it's probably because you don't have forgiveness in your life. Because it blocks everything. Your prayers are blocked. And so when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. I'm just going to move down and give you really quickly the definition of grudge since we're there. And grudge coming up on the screen there is a feeling of deep-seated resentment or ill will. And the synonyms 
are bitterness, offense, condemnation, and hostility. Now to back this up, verse 22, Jesus, and I'm skipping you around in there, but I'm, I'm, most of you kind of get this. I want to get to the really good stuff here. So then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. Verse 23, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that, you've received it, it will be yours. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone. So you cannot move a mountain until you forgive those who hurt you. You cannot see a miracle until you forgive those who hurt you. Those who condemned you, those who opposed you, those who talked bad about you, you have to forgive them or nothing is going to happen in your life. And I'm telling you today, if you're praying for a miracle and you're not seeing it, you better forgive somebody. It could be back from your childhood. It could be your father. It could be your mother. could be your family. could be your church people. It doesn't matter. You forgive them. Now, let me qualify forgiving. Forgiving means you release them from the offense. But you don't have to go back and get in that toxic situation again. Okay? You don't have to go back to it. You just forgive them. So this isn't like, oh, I guess i got to go back and take the abuse. You don't have to take the abuse. You forgive them for the abuse and you stay away from that, and you move on. But if you're not seeing mountains moved, if you're not seeing uh, anything that you believe for happen, then you might want to check yourself for forgiveness. Unforgiveness, to be exact. This is going to change your world. Because even if it's your kids, you just forgive them. You don't have to like what they're doing. You don't have to like the situation. In fact, you may need to get rid of the situation and get away from it. That's not a word. I'm just saying. But uh, <laughs> this, this, isn't, this isn't family advice. Sorry, just for forgiveness part. But what I'm saying is that until you forgive and release, then you'll never be able to walk in the power that Jesus Christ called you to walk in. And if you can't walk in the power, you can't live a holy life. If you can't live a holy life, you can't see God. And can I tell you this? Here's what Matthew says. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father, this is 6, 14 to 15, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Awesome. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive you. You are in dangers of the fires of hell if you don't forgive someone. You cannot be saved if you cannot forgive. It is as black and white as it can possibly get. There is no gray area here. This is the most important thing you must do in your life as a believer is to forgive others. You have to forgive those who hurt you. And it won't be easy because it never is to take the high road. But the high road is your freedom. But until you do, you're not, you're not even going to heaven. And then you know how I can tell you that? Because narrow is the path that leads to heaven. And only a few find it. The odds are slim. That should hit you pretty hard this morning. Because you can't earn salvation. You forgive and you believe. We make it like a bunch of religious duties. It's so simple, but many, many people say, I will not forgive that person, and you will not go to heaven, sir, ma'am. You are in dangers of the fire of hell. So no matter what they did to you, no matter how bad you perceived it was in your mind, because your mind is enmity towards God. This is where it's going to make, start, man, you will just tell yourself some things and you'll build up this whole story and then you go and find out the truth and go, that's not anything close to what I believed. Because you didn't want to forgive and you want to build it up. I mean, it's getting real, right? Jesus is coming soon. It's, we got to get this thing, this thing together here. You felt the anointing in this place. I mean, man, if you're going to continue to go deeper into the wells of revival, then you got to go more into the forgiveness of people that hurt you. Because it's going to cost you something, all right? Ain't nothing for free. It's going to cost you because you want to hold on to that hate. You want to hold on to that unforgiveness. Because you know why? Because of pride. Because you can justify it in your mind and say, I was right. That's where it stems from. I was right. I should not have to ask, say I'm sorry. That was the devil's first sin. 
Well, it's Eve's, not devil's, well, it was his verse. Well, I don't know what his verse was. That dude's a mess. <sighs> but uh, I, know, I know it was Adam and Eve's because they wanted to be like God and eat from that tree he told them not to. So verse uh, Matthew 5, 23, might as well go to where Jesus is talking here. This is good stuff. So if you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar and then go and be reconciled to that person. Your gifts are no good. Doesn't matter how much you give. If you don't forgive, God doesn't even acknowledge it. It's going to be deep and it's going to hurt because you're going to have to forgive people that you really don't want to. But until you do, you might as well just hit a brick wall and you can't get through it. You ain't got the wrecking ball big enough to break that wall down. Only forgiveness can do it. And then at that point when that happens, it grows, it just lays, lays flat. And then you can move forward in your spiritual walk. Then you can start to say to this mountain, go from here and be cast into the sea and it will. Then you can say, be healed in the name of Jesus and they become healed. These things happen when you release the forgiveness because the forgiveness is a fiery dart that all it does is build up poison in your system and in your spirit, unforgiveness. So it says, leave your sacrifice there at the altar, then go and be reconciled to that person. We're going to pray today that anybody that needs to be reconciled in your mind will come to your mind. The Holy Spirit will bring it into remembrance. Some of you right now are already thinking of people that need to be reconciled right now. You have to go and be reconciled before you offer your sacrifice to God. Your sacrifice has to come after reconciliation and forgiveness. Matthew 7, 13, 14. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. I'm giving you the scriptures to back up what I'm saying. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is very difficult, and only a few ever find it. It's not difficult because of the grace. It's difficult because of your mind has to get lined up with the word of God. It's difficult because you have to forgive those who hurt you. You have to forgive your tormentors. You have to give your accusers. You have to give those that persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you. But great is your reward in heaven when you do that. Come on. That Jesus said that. He said, hey, great is your reward in heaven. Now, how many of you here want a great reward in heaven? Amen. You got to forgive everyone that hurt you, everyone that said evil against you, everyone that did anything against you, and you put under the blood of Jesus, and guess what? what? You're free. You're free. It doesn't make them free. It makes you free. You're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you. This is a you thing today. This is going to make your life start moving forward once again. You're going to start to see the power of God move in your life because he's looking for people right now that will take the mantle. He said, it was kind of like Elijah when he went up to heaven in a chariot of fire. He said, if my mantle falls on you, then you get the anointing. And right now there's fire and he's waiting for people to fall on, but no one's taking the mantle. It lays on the ground because no one was found worthy. But through forgiveness, that mantle's yours. When Elisha picked up that mantle, he rolled it up and he struck the water and it divided in two and he walked across on dry ground. God has a mantle for every one of your lives. And it's a mantle of power. It's a mantle of authority. You want to know what true power is? Submit yourselves to God and resist the devil. And then you'll know what true power is. You'll start to see the dead rays. You'll be like, "Woo!" you'll walk in places. We went to a restaurant. A guy came up to us crying out of the blue. And he says, my daughter just went into the hospital, and I don't think she's going to live. Will you pray for me? He doesn't know nothing. He still has to lost Palomas like a couple times. And he's just weeping and bawling right next to us because he knows that the anointing's there. That's how it should be when you operate in the kingdom of heaven. Everywhere you go, people should be drawn to you because you are the light of the world and they're tired of the darkness. They want the freedom. They want to be set free. They want hope. They want someone to show them the way. But until you forgive those who hurt you, you're not the one and you don't have the mantle. He's looking for some mantle carriers today. Some people that will run with the prize. Some people that will give it all and go forth. I'm going to close with this. Ladies, you guys can come on up here. I told you it's going to be short because I, I get that we know this, but I want to drill this home today because I'm telling you, there's a shift in the atmosphere. Not just this atmosphere, yeah. 
But the environment, there's a shift. There is a release of evil that's happening, that's coming against you like you've never seen before. There's a wave of evil, and you will be swept away with it if you don't set your feet in Christ right now. And you don't get planted into the word of God. And you don't get so steadfast that nothing can shake you. And that's why James said, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds, brother, because your faith gets tested and gets built up, and then it builds your per perseverance. And then it comes forth as pure gold, because until you get tested, you can't get through a trial. The more trials you go through, the more faith you have. That's why he said consider it pure joy. You can turn out the house lights there, uh, Todd, please. In Matthew 7 to 6, don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. It's time to cut some ties with people in your life that don't think the same way you do. You can, you, you know, I, I get being, a, being a, a light to the lost, but there's some people that are so unholy, they'll never be holy. And you break away from those people. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. Don't give what you have to somebody that's going to trample it and take you down with them. Because the ultimate goal is to take you down and destroy your reputation. The ultimate goal is to take you down and destroy any authority you have here on earth so you cannot be any powerful against the demonic realm. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. And how many know that? No good deed goes unpunished. That's a terrible, terrible proverb. Not in the Bible proverb, just a proverb proverb. But it's true. You spend time with people who are unholy, and pretty soon they rub back on you. They come and trample on the goodness you've given them. Right now, it's a time to it's a time to steady yourself in the Word. It's a time to focus and a time to really dig in, because the devil's out destroying families left and right. He's out destroying marriages left and right. He's out destroying ministries left and right. He's out destroying any kind of relationship that is good, trustworthy holy, he's out to destroy that. And we think it's un impossible to, for him to do. And then all of a sudden, he gets in like a flood. You're like, how did that even happen? It happens through unforgiveness and through pride because you always say, I'm right. This person has to line up with me. Amen. So let's just stand up this morning. As we close this last song, the altars are open. I'm going to encourage you to leave your gift at the altar. Bring it, leave it. And I'm talking spiritually, by the way. I mean, financially, there's a basket. <laughs> but leave your gift at the altar today. And the Holy Spirit's uh, right now on your mind putting somebody that needs forgiveness in your life. It's better you go to and forgive them, but sometimes that's not possible. You just have to forgive them. You can forgive them right here, right now. And it releases you from the bondage. It doesn't mean what that person did was right. It doesn't mean you were wrong. What it means is you take the high road. I'm saying, Jesus, I don't want to be in dangers of the fire of hell. I don't want to be in dangers of taking the broad road that leads to destruction. I want to walk the, the narrow path that only a few find. Lord, we just thank you today for your presence. And Lord, I thank you right now that you're bringing remembrance to the people. Lord, we don't want offense. We don't want bitterness. We don't even want the perceived offense. Destroy what you want to do in our lives. Lord, we want to walk in 100% submission to you, Jesus. We want to walk in obedience. We want to walk in the authority and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ himself who went to that cross and took the keys of death and Hades from the devil himself and now gave us power to trample on snakes and scorpions and not get hurt. To be able to, to walk into dark places and bring in the light. To say to this demon, get out in the name of Jesus. And it does because Lord God, every demon has a bow before the name of Jesus. And we take captive over that today in the name of Jesus. That, Lord God, right now is a holy moment. That this is a time of restoration. This is a time of healing.
Lord, bring the families back together once again. Let the love return to the spouses, oh God. And let that love trickle down to the sons and the daughters. Lord, let there be such a harmonious love in the family that it's unshakable, unbreakable, that, Lord God, nothing can come against it, oh Lord. Lord, I thank you that their faith may not waver and may be strengthened here in the hearing of the word today. Lord, I thank you for forgiveness, that you forgave us of so much. Lord, we thank you that you gave it all so that we can have life and not more abundantly. Lord, I thank you for the abundant life coming on the people here in this place. Lord, I thank you for the restoration of the families. I thank you, Lord God, for the love that is flowing in their businesses, their workplaces. Lord God, is flowing into to all areas of their, of their uh, Lord, their reach. And Lord, as we praise you today, fill us once again. Fill the holes, fill the hurts, fill those things that the, that offense had done to us. And make your people whole in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So as you sing this song, just, just worship the Lord. Come to the altar and forgive those who hurt you. Lay it all down today because he's going to raise you up, build you up, and lift you up. Thank you, Lord.
that they are overcomers because your word is for them today. Lord, I pray that you bless them in all their goings, all they lay their hands to this week and bring them all back safely that we may rejoice in you and testify in you again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.